<laughs> so, uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Jeff Tangney. I'm uh, one of the two founders of Apocrys. Yeah. And um, how did you start this? Where, where did the idea for this company come from? Oh, really? Um, and when did it start? Because it's, it's been it around It was 1999, now. and uh, the joke we use is it was dorks meeting doctors, right? So I'm the dork, and I had a friend who was a doctor. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I had my Palm Pilot, and I was very excited about the Palm Pilot. I remember being a member of the Stanford uh, Palm Pilot Users Group, which got together Wednesday nights in Mountain View, California, to talk about new things that we found for, um, for our Palm Pilots. So anyway, we did that. I had a friend in school who was a doctor, and uh, started talking about what the things he needed um, to remember in his day-to-day, -day, and I thought the Palm Pilot would be perfect for it. So. Yeah. Uh, we went from there. Very cool. And tell me a little bit about the company, because we, we've already had a look at the, at the iPhone app uh, and I had a doctor uh, showing us how he uses uh, it, but uh, tell me how is the company funded and uh, is it profitable and all uh, that fun, uh, fast company stuff. Um, the company's doing very well. Um, we uh, don't talk a whole lot about our financials. Yeah. Um, uh, we have been in a quiet period at various points, but suffice it to say, uh, we've been cash flow positive for quite a while. We're very focused on um, delivering sort of new great applications for our doctors. We now have more than one in four U.S. physicians who are active users uh, of our of our software. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Which is the main way we sort of measure ourselves: is are we helping doctors and are doctors taking the time to go out and buy one of these devices, right? Yeah. <laughs> to come and use our software in front of their patients. What, what are the objections that you're still getting from doctors? Why aren't, why aren't you getting 100%? Yeah. Um, well, we're getting there, and, and we actually do, do better in medical schools. So we uh, have a university consortium program uh, that actually Erica manages um, that uh, you know, we do very well among medical school students. But um, I'll say that uh, it still is an effort. You've got to go out and buy one of these devices. Now the iPhone is very hot. But before that, a BlackBerry or a Palm or a Pocket PC device. You've got to download and install the software, and you've got to start using it. Yeah. Um, so we're very consistent. Um, we only count a doctor as an active user if they you know, really are actively using the software. Um, so someone who puts it away in their desk, we don't count them anymore. right? Yeah. Um, so for us to get to one in four U.S. physicians as active users, uh, again, we're, we're thrilled about that. and. Um, we think that the studies we've done about how it improves patient care, uh, it's, it's great to be at a company where, as we say, we can you know, do well by doing good. Yeah. Uh, so we did a study with uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is a satellite of uh, Harvard Medical School, showing that the average physician who uses us um, avoids, on average, a couple adverse drug events, basically bad things, <laughs> uh, every week, which... Uh, again, has a, a huge ripple effect and impact, particularly as we've got lots of folks out there probably like our parents who are on multiple different medications, and yeah. there's a lot of risks with that. Absolutely. Um, where do I want to go with this? <laughs> the, um, I'm actually looking for Erica. Normally she's telling me everything to say. <laughs> Erica, you're over there! I mean, you can't, you can't be saying... <laughs> No, um, yeah, the puppet strings aren't working over here. That's really <laughs> no, we had a, a great visit with a doctor who's, who's given me a. What did, what has the iPhone meant to you? I mean, you started out with a palm, by being a palm company and a, a palm enthusiast. What? How has the iPhone changed your business? Because that's that came out what seven months ago. Yeah, about your, seven. Your months iPhone ago. version. Steve Jobs. Um, sure. <laughs> don't tell me about Steve Jobs' medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, I don't want to know. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, um, I will say this. Uh, the iPhone has been, in, in many ways, what we as a company have been waiting for. Um, yeah. You know, the way physicians use our product is to look up information about their patients, and you need a big screen that's kind of rich and easy to use and, and to go through all of that. Um, I'll admit, I was actually excited for a while about, you know, this, the Amazon Kindle, I, right? I just ordered the new one. Oh, really? Yeah, the K2 morning. that's come out. I'm excited about that, yeah. too. Um, but the, well, this has, it's not as good at doing interactive software as, as this is. And uh, the Palm devices are still good, and actually the new Palm uh, Pre, I think, is going to be a very, very hot device among our users. Yeah. Um, but what we were are really you going to support that? 
Um, <laughs> I guess he's so because you just mentioned it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think his team just spun up in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta ship that now. <laughs> We're very excited about the foam free. Yeah, um, we haven't made any announcements about that. Very cool. Um, but it's a, a very you know cool device as well. You know, at the end of the day, uh, for us, we want to be platform agnostic, uh, and I think we we are. Um, the way we got introduced to Apple and the iPhone, as Erica mentioned, was actually Steve Jobs' personal physician had a trio um, and told him that um, she uh, wouldn't uh, switch to an iPhone until she had Hippocrates available on an iPhone, which um, got us some internal visibility there, which was great. Uh, certainly they knew about us from, uh, they have two doctors there on staff at the Apple campus that, yep. that use us as well. Um, so we were able to be part of their early developer program. We were one of the four companies on stage with Steve yep. uh, when they announced the whole SDK back in uh, June, I guess, of, of last year, uh, yep. 2008. Um, so we've been excited to be just around at the very beginning of that and really could not have been more fortunate in terms of picking a device and a platform that really has struck a chord. I mean, to sell as many units as it has, I mean, it's already a significant portion of our physicians who have moved over to iPhone yep. um, or who have come to us for the first time having purchased an iPhone, which, uh, which is terrific. And the things that it allows us to do, um, you know, the ability to have video pictures, I mean, for a physician, uh, you know, we have pill pics, for example. Yep. So, you know, we got an email uh, a few weeks after we came out with the iPhone from an emergency medical technician, an EMT who had gone out on a call, unconscious elderly woman on the ground. She's got her little day, you know, minder, you know, those you know, little things with different pills every day in it, yeah. right? Um, and she's unconscious, and it could be because of the meds she was taking. And sure enough, he was able to punch in, you know, red pill, uh, three-sided, blue pill, oval-shaped, find out what the drugs were, and find out that the problem actually was uh, the drugs that she was taking, wow. uh, give her the right medication as a shot right there, and, you know, wham, she wakes up, right? Uh, so that kind of thing, I mean, it, it, it's what gets us up in the morning, right? And again, the iPhone just allows us to do more of that. Um, yeah. We weren't able, frankly, to do pill pictures um, with the kind of intensity and search and that sort of thing because of the memory limitations and other things of other platforms. The iPhone really takes us to a whole new level of, of computing in a mobile way. Yeah. Um, where was I going to go? Are you tracking any, are you tracking usage data from the doctors? And can you see like a new, if a new disease came out and spread really fast, would you be able to see that based on what people are looking We're for? We're tracking Ebola right now. <laughs> Um, I met the guy who uh, co-discovered co Ebola oh, really? a week ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, don't, don't. Ebola <laughs> <laughs> is not a funny topic. <laughs> no. uh, um, we do gather uh, usage data from our users. Um, yeah. We uh, uh, treat it you know, with the utmost privacy. We have a whole privacy policy around it. We use it uh, to really better the product. It helps us prioritize um, you know, which... Uh, drugs to update every day versus every week and yeah. um, which diseases are most relevant in certain areas and specialties and it allows us to just personalize uh, the experience a little bit more. So that's that's how we use the data or have used it. Um, is there a way for a doctor to report that he's seeing something that isn't in, in, in Hippocrates, that there's a new condition or a new or it's taking him down a path where he, the answers that he's getting back are unsatisfactory or yeah, so we do get a bunch of, uh, basically within the app itself it says suggestions, feedback, tap here, and then it launches an email basically to that email box. So nothing too technically sophisticated, but it's easy enough that we get, um, I don't know the latest number, but we used to get hundreds of these emails you know, per week with um, you know, a question about, you know, have we considered this subcase of this disease and do we have the full treatment algorithm for that in there yet? Or, mm. you know, there's this new lab test available in some areas that can be added. Or um, the dose of this drug, sometimes people do 20 milligrams, but in their practice they sometimes do 30 milligrams. And it becomes this, this community of best practice around um, treatment and, and research. And so our editors here publish a lot of these um, and, and winnow through them and use them to make the product better. Um, we 
don't have a formal uh, you know, report an adverse drug event or structured forms, if you will, for these types of things, uh, but that's something we've been talking about. Well, for so, some of your readers, I'll point out that um, we're, we're very fortunate to be, I think, in a market that still has a lot of need. I mean, we know with uh, changes in our administration, um, with uh, the continuing just advances in healthcare, it gets more and more complicated every day. I mean, the, uh, the former Surgeon General of the U.S. said that if a doctor read um, one article a day for a year, at the end of that year, they'd be 50 years behind in their reading. Right? Yeah. I mean, just the volume of new information, which is all good new information, but it's, it's difficult to synthesize and put together and to make available um, in an environment where increasingly doctors are asked to, you know, see a new patient every five minutes or every 10 minutes. Right? Yeah. Is there anybody uh, competing with you? Um, we do have some competitors. Uh, I prefer not to talk about them, um, no. but I'll say I think we're the clear leader in our space. It's it's not easy to do what we do. It really requires that under one roof we put a lot of uh, physician knowledge, clinical knowledge, right? Yeah. Um, and at the same time, a lot of mobile technology knowledge, which isn't you know that uh, widespread at this point. Yeah. Um, I mean, knowing how to do all the little tricks on the iPhone and the BlackBerry isn't a large uh, developer community yet. Uh, and then being able to update that real time and to make that a seamless experience end to end and to have a business model that supports it, it, um, it isn't very easy to do. And we've been lucky, I think fortunate to be uh, in a market that is fairly uh, recession resistant. I mean, people still need healthcare, right? Yeah. And the amount of new information in healthcare is still growing, so the underlying need is still there. And then finally, the popularity of new devices like the iPhone, they are better, faster, cheaper all the time, and so we continue to grow there. So uh, one comment, I guess, for your readers, that we are probably are one of the few companies that still really is um, hiring and looking for top uh, talent, uh, what kind of technically, for? editorially, otherwise. I think, you know, here in the Bay Area, mainly uh, technical talent. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've got a really uh, world-class team of engineers here that know these mobile platforms better than anyone, so they're a great group to, to learn with and develop with. Um, and again, because we still see so much demand and because the iPhone is one of the few, and Apple is one of the few stocks that's doing well and you yeah. know, still selling more and more units, um, we're in a position where we can continue to reinvest to make our products even better. Very cool. Well, thank you yeah. so much. This yeah, thank you, Robert. Yeah, thanks. thanks.